I'm going to be installing three packages that will help us make an HTTP request and decode our data. So I already have the command pasted in. And the three packages we'll be installing is Elm Decode Pipeline, which will help us bring in the JSON into Elm. And so it has types and everything. And then, yes. And then we'll also be bringing in remote data, which is just a data type representing um, our fetch data, which we'll go into a little bit more when, I, when we see it. But that'll help us with our UI in different states, like when data is loading or when the data is, um, we couldn't actually get the data or we are, haven't even asked for the data. So that'll help us in the UI. And then I'm also bringing in Elm HTTP Builder, which will just help us build up these HTTP requests. So thank you to all those authors who have created these packages. Okay, now we can go back to our app and start it back up. Okay, great. Now we're ready to make the request. So head up here and just to keep this file a little clean, I'm actually going to just name this requests and we'll create our first request. So I'm going to call this get champions because that's part of the API that I'm using. And we'll actually go over here and get that API over here. And this is going to be what our data looks like. And so now we'll say HTTP builder dot get. And you can see right here as it takes in a string. So here's string my data and now we can just build up our request so this is going to be http builder and then we're going to expect right there you can see the example so it's going to expect http expect json and this is where we pass in the decoder so i'm just going to say decode champions and we'll go and create that in a little bit and then we'll also say http builder to task and a task um, i'm not going to go explain it in depth, but just briefly is just um, async operations that may fail. So a perfect example of that would be an HTTP request. So we'll say to task and then we'll create and then we'll be we'll be using remote data, which remote data has a helper function called from task. So that'll convert a task to remote data, which we'll be able to work with later. Okay, now we'll go ahead and create that decoder that we named right here, decode champions. So decode champions. And this is gonna be where we start looking at our data and each API and um, REST API is gonna be different. So it depends on what you're working with, but with this specific API, it looks like it starts with data and then it has just a ton of champions and it starts by their name. And then inside there it has more info and just different kind of things that we can use to make our app great. So the best way that's helped me to look at um, JSON decoders and decoding data, data is starting from the bottom up. So we'll start from basically right here. And first thing that I noticed is it's gonna be a slightly tricky, but the way I'm gonna do it is by making a key value pair with all of these names that we can see here. So. Remember, we're starting at the bottom. So this is gonna be json.decode. There's a method called key value pairs. And as you can see right there, it'll have a tuple of the name or whatever we pass it. So it's gonna be key value pairs. And then right here is actually gonna be our decode champion because this whole thing right here is what I want to be passed in. So all this data. So I'm, we're gonna to have to create that in a bit, but for now we'll start right there. So that is a typo. And then we'll start again from back here. And so now we'll go ahead and look at the data and be like, oh, we actually got to start at data. So we'll say json.decode at. And right there, it's, look, this is really just a shorthand for saying things like this. And basically, it'll put us at that spot. So data. And then we'll pipe in our key value pairs. And then right here is just a slight, going to be slightly trickier. Um, it's going to be a list. We're going to have a list of these items and it's going to be a tuple like we've created right here with the key value pairs of um, the champion name and then all the stats that we have. So we're actually going to create a map. And as you can see here, it takes in a function and this will just transform right here. As it says transformer decoder type. So we'll create that function right here. And this is going to be list.map and then tuple dot second. And I'll explain that right now. So basically, um, we're going to be 
creating a tuple of this key value pairs and it's going to be like atrox and then it's going to have our data and then it's going to be a list of those so like that so we'll have tuples like that so what we want to do is just get the second part and if we want to get this name out um, we could but because the name stored inside the actual um, attribute right here we don't need to so I'll just drop this name right here so that's what it's gonna look like and as you can see starting from the bottom of a decoder helps me out personally at least to think about it so then we'll save that so things get kind of readjusted and we'll start importing things import import HTTP builder import HTTP expect JSON and what happened there Ah, so it's actually I didn't actually install HTTP. So Elm package install Elm dash slang HTTP. Yes, I thought that would have installed with uh, HTTP builder. So now we can go back and that should import just fine. And then we can go down here and import remote data. Now we can go over here and create this decode champion function. Say decode champion. And this is where we're going to start using our JSON decode pipeline, that package that we installed. So JSON decode.pipeline. And this just makes it um, convenient to create decoders and decode champion, which is going to be a type that we'll have to create. And now we can just decide what we want to bring in. And I think for now, we'll just bring in the name, um, title, like the image, and then the ID. We'll start off by passing, piping it in, JSON to code pipeline. And right here is going to be required. And so now we'll just say name and then JSON to code string. And then, because it's a string, and then JSON to code pipeline dot required. And right here is going to be title. And again, it's a string, so string. And then we'll create another pipe. And this is going to be image, and then we'll bring in the full image. And this one's going to be slightly different, but we'll um, JSON to code pipeline has a custom, so we'll say custom, and then we'll pass in JSON to code at again, and this is going to be image and full, and then right here is just going to be a JSON to code string just like that and then we'll create one more and say json code pipeline and say required id json code string perfect so they all happen to be strings but if they were numbers or i uh, ints then if they're numbers then we'd say int but since they're all strings they're strings let's we'll save that and we get the error of the champion type and also going back i actually wanted to explain this a little bit like if you click right here it's just a nested right here. It says decode a nested JSON object with certain fields. So it goes image and then full. That's why there's two instead of just data, right? So now we'll create our champion type. So we can go to where our types are at right here. It's fine place. We can say type alias champion. And now it's going to be a record and we'll say name and they're all just strings. So string title is a string. Um, image is a string and ID is a string save that and there we go so it's it's compiling that's perfect it's exactly what we want and as you can see it's saying um, it's giving all these warnings that I don't have any type annotations and I'm going to just auto import those and work with that actually this is not going to be what I want um, I'm going to want this to be a task never and then I want this to be, there's actually a handy alias that remote data has, which is web data. Um, as you can see right here, this is just so common that it's useful to use for REST APIs. And then this is going to be a list of champion. So a list of all these. Save that. And we'll make sure we import task. And web data. Great, so now we're compiling and we have our type annotations that actually look great. That's, that's what we want. 
So now we can go up to our knit and actually start working with this. And what we're going to want to do is create um, a champions on the model. And this is going to be just like the type annotation below, a web data of list champions. So we just have lots of champions. Save that. Now we can see, oh, we need to create that in the init. And something personally I actually just like to do is create a let in block and then say model is equal to record right here. And then champions is equal to, this is actually going to be remote data dot loading. So this is what's so great about remote data is it has these four different cases of failure, success, loading, or not asked. And that's when you make the request, the HTTP request, it has different states that we're in. And we can display that to the user in the UI according to those states. And so when we just load the web page, we want to say, all right, we're going to go fetch those champions from an API. Can you just hang on? And then we can show them like a loading animation or whatever. And then right here is going to say model. So I'm going to remove that actually. Just I just personally like this style more. And then we can pass in the commands. So right here is where we can call the, the HTTP request that we made. So right when the page loads, we want to fire off that request. So get champions. And then we're going to actually pass in um, the, it's a task. So task has a helpful library or has helpful function called perform. And this is just going to actually execute the task. And so we'll say perform. And as you can see, it takes in a message. So we're going to say got champions. Because it's no longer get, it's got. And well, it's like, what is that? Well, we have to go create that. So we'll go down here to our types. We'll say, pass it to the union type and say, got champions. And right here, got champions is actually going to be the same thing as before. as a web data of list champion. So now we can save that. And it's going to say, um, oh, we're not actually using this message in our update function. But now we will begin using it. So we'll say right here, we'll say case message of and now we have to pass in all the messages right here. So got champions is going to be one of them. And the next one is no op. So no operation. And this is just going to be model with no command. And then right here, this one's going to be web champion data. So that's getting passed in right here. And now we'll say model. And now we can create the champions. This is the champions on our actual model up here. And now we can just give it the champion. So web champion data. Perfect. So now we can save that. And oh, it's throwing that error because this one doesn't actually have a command. So we have to stay consistent. The compiler is keeping us honest. Save that. Boom. So now it's compiling, which is fantastic. And we're almost there. So the last thing we need to do is just actually display the data. So we'll go down to our elements and we can just delete these. And now we'll say, case model champions because it's web data and so this case is going to have multiple cases so remote data dot failure is going to be one of them and as you can see right here it passes in it takes in an error so error and then we can just say text to string error and then the next case is going to be remote data dot success and this is going to take in um, the champs so this is going to have all our champs right there. So now we can say element.paragraph to actually display them right here. Pa paragraph. And this is just going to be a no style for now so we can display the data. So right here. And last one. This is going to be text to string champs. Perfect. And now we can display our loading, um, which we can just say, loading please wait and then our last case is just uh, we can just say whatever not ask this would be like not ask but this is also just a catch-all and this is going to be text just whatever empty save that and in theory that sh there it is so there's all our data and now we can begin working with it